Hey, what's up, solopreneurs? This is part two of how to save your customers from canceling without sounding desperate. If you have not listened to part one, go listen to the previous episode where we talk about the steps you must take to save your customers if they try to cancel. In this podcast, we're going to be getting into some live footage of me going back to one of my customers that called me trying to cancel. You're going to hear how I handled it, some things that I could have done better. So let's jump into it. My name is Taylor Armstrong. We're here to help you close more deals, generate more leads and referrals, and have a much better time in the solar industry. Thanks for being here. Much appreciated. And if this is your first time listening, welcome to the show. You are about to double, triple, quadruple your income by listening to this podcast. And if you're a returning listener, Thanks so much for putting your trust in myself and our team to help you improve your craft at selling solar and growing your solar business. And as usual, we are free and available on Apple, iTunes, Spotify, and most recently, YouTube. Okay, and we actually have a giveaway going on right now. If you're listening to this um, after the fact, sorry you missed out, but we will be doing more giveaways in the future. But assuming you're listening to this, that at the time it was launched, this is going until June 25th, 2023. I think that's the year we're in, right? Yep, time flies. <laughs> 2023. And um, the giveaway is this we're doing some solar drop cards, um, which these were created by our friend Brad Mortensen over at RepCard. In my opinion, it is the best and most effective business card out there because it's not your typical business card. It is the modern day revolutionary business card where it has um, some info about solar on the front and on the back, it has a little QR code. People scan this QR code, you're getting notified. Um, Assuming you're using rep card, you can uh, get them added in your rep card CRM follow up with them automatically. So it is a game changer. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on this. And these things aren't cheap either. Um, but 129 bucks per box. Uh, I think it's 500 of them. We're giving out two boxes of these. So if you want to try them out, make sure you enter the giveaway. All you, There are just a couple simple rules. And number one, you need to go subscribe to the YouTube channel, that Solarpreneur podcast. Um, or maybe it's just that Solarpreneur it's going to be in the show notes. Okay. So refer to the show notes. It's a brand new YouTube channel. And number two, if you have not already, we need you to go follow Solarpreneur Podcast on Instagram and leave a review for the podcast. So three rules, pretty simple. And then once you're done with this, we have a post either in the Facebook group, uh, Solarpreneurs, or on Instagram if you're from Solarpreneur Podcast, just comment Solarpreneur on there and you are entered. If for some reason you're not on social media, then you're missing out. But you can also email um, myself at taylorsolarpreneur.com if you're not on social media that you completed the test. So go enter today. Don't miss out and go get some free drop cards. Okay. And the YouTube channel, we are switching it up. It's not always going to follow the schedule of the podcast, but we are um, launching exclusive interviews on there. Um, A lot of the podcasts from, you know, the earlier days of Solarpreneur podcast, we're going to be launching the video footage that's never before seen. So definitely tune in because you're going to be able to take advantage of both of them, podcasts and YouTube channel. Okay, so today we're going to jump in, like I said, the live footage of me trying to save a deal that was canceling. And spoiler alert, I did not save the deal, unfortunately. Hey, but there were some tough, I'd almost call them conditions, but we ran into the moving objection and made some crucial mistakes. So I still think maybe if I would have played my cards a little bit differently, there could have been a better chance. But either way, it was a tough deal to save. So let's listen to some live footage of this. And by the way, you're going to hear this recording on my other, one of my other favorite apps for Solar Pros. It's called Ciro. It is the best, fastest, and easiest way to record all your sales conversations to go back and let's see the transcriptions on them to work with coaches and tag different sections. So definitely check that out. Um, If you want to hit up the guys over at Ciro, let, let them know you heard about it from Solarpreneur Podcast. They will hook you up. And then also... Another way to get access is we do have a few spots available in our coaching group where you can get live feedback from coaches in our exclusive Ciro community. But let's jump right into it here. So I'm going to play from the time I went back to these people. If you listen to the last podcast, you know how I handled the phone conversation, which is you need to use 
um, the phone to leverage your way back inside the house because it is very difficult to save a deal over the phone. So you always want to figure out a way to get back in front of the customer. And that's exactly what I did. You're going to hear what I did once I got inside the home. So let's check it out. Just get back to the beginning here. And the audio quality, it is not the greatest. Okay, so sorry if it is tough to listen to, but it's recorded all from my phone. And I think I was kind of adjusting my phone a little bit. So heard some muffling, things like that. But I think you'll get the idea here. Check it out. Hello. Hey, Bonnie, how's it going? How are you? Doing well. I'm kind of here. So okay, but stuff in with you. How's it going? I'm going to work all the time. Okay, back. Yeah, sorry to hear you guys. Is that, yeah, yeah, nothing against you. I hope you don't take it personally. <laughs> no, well, yeah, obviously, I want you guys to shit about it, but yeah, I just felt bad that I think. Yeah, I'm not worried. It was just the way it was going to happen. Is that a fine form? Yeah, it's right. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, it sounds like you guys just talked to a realtor and they're the ones that kind of recommend it. Yeah, because we're, gonna, we're hoping to sell. The goal is within a year, and he says that, that type of thing complicates stuff. I mean, if it was already established or if this was going to be our forever home and we weren't going to move, yeah. and then it would have been a no-brainer and then we would have just stuck with it. Well, yeah. kind of like the neighbor, she's going to be there for as long as she's yeah. going to be here, and it's just, you know. Yeah. I didn't realize it was so soon, so you guys are thinking of moving like within a year? Yeah, we were <clears throat> bouncing. Okay, so a couple things here. Um, sorry, we started off a little bit quick. I usually put these things on like 1.5x speed just to get through them a little bit quicker, but I know they can get fast on the podcast. Um, so you hear a couple things right off the bat. I went and uh, got to the door. And as you know, from the previous podcasts, the reason I was able to get back in front of them is because I told them, if you guys want to cancel, we need to fill out a cancellation form in person. And so I set an appointment to go fill out the cancellation form. So you notice that once I get there, um, don't settle for doing this on the on the porch. You need to make your way back to the kitchen table inside the home. And that is what I did. Okay, I assumed that we're I'm going back inside, um, started taking my shoes off and got back inside the home. And then instantly you can hear him just spitting out the reason why. Okay, and this is why it's much easier to do these things in person because the homeowner, he told me exactly why he is thinking of canceling. And the other key with this, when I got in, I didn't say, oh, why are you guys canceling? Why this? The way you want to phrase these things, this comes from one of my favorite books for sales and negotiations, Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. So the line I use is, hey, it sounds like your realtor um, recommended against it. I think that's what I said. But yeah, it sounds like you guys talked to a realtor and they recommend you didn't do it. Okay, this is called labeling. You're putting a label on what they're feeling, what they're doing. Okay, and much more effective than just saying, hey, why are you guys canceling? Said so it sounds like this is going on. It's called labeling. And that is, I think, the most powerful way to get people to give you more information. It's non-confrontational. People like it much better than saying, why why is this happening? If you notice, if you say, why, like, why aren't you guys interested in solar? Why are you canceling? Why this? Why that? Sounds a lot more confrontational, right? And people, they put up walls when we, when we ask these why questions. So you need to take these lines from never split the difference. This dude was a top FBI negotiator, literally talked people out of, you know, murdering others and all this crazy stuff. So I think it's, I think this guy knows what he's talking about. So we need to use these same lines in sales and negotiate people from jumping off the cliff of staying with the utility company. Terrible decision. Okay. But yeah, worked great in this case. And he told me exactly why they wanted to cancel. So let's keep it going. But we also had some, um, we we're talking to the bank and there was just things that we could do to kind of speed things up the same day um, that you were coming over. Yeah. So at first we thought it might've been a good idea to do the selling point, but then after talking to the realtor, it may not be an ideal, especially in your current yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the least amount of complications. I mean, there's already a lot going on. <laughs> yes, yeah, they're here. Yeah, I thought I asked, asked you guys. Maybe I did it, but that is. Okay. And so I've got an uphill battle. They talked to their realtor who come to find out sounds like it's someone they've been working with for a while is a trusted advisor for them. And here's my biggest mistake right off the get-go is you got to understand that if they get a recommendation from a friend or in this case a realtor that they really trust that they think knows this stuff it doesn't matter what I say at that point 
Yeah, they're always going to trust their friend, their realtor they've been working with for forever. They're going to trust them more than whatever I have to say, than whatever proof evidence I can throw at them. They're not going to believe that. That Really, I need to point. What I should have done is figure out a way to get in front of that realtor. Because unless I get the realtor involved and get him to you know buy in and recommend this, I'm, it's not going anywhere. And you'll see that I try to throw some solid reasons they should still go with it, but it's like throwing marbles at a battleship. It's not getting me anywhere, right? I'm not going to sink that battleship now. So that's my biggest mistake in all of this is I needed to figure out a way to talk to the realtor. That is pretty soon, but uh, yeah, I can. We have helped a lot of people. Um, do you know if you're a realtor? Green circuit by it and he's pulled the one on the floor and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, we've been working with him for a long time. We just we have to work on our credit. We didn't just call him up out of the blue and ask him questions. He's somebody that we already know. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, because I might work with the realtor too, and he sold a lot of homes with solar. Um, and I'm sure your realtor knows a lot, but he, um, I asked him to search on the zip code here. As we showed, these are all the homes that have sold. I guess in your zip code with solar. So yeah, you pull up like 60 homes. Yeah, I, we, we, still, we still want to cancel. Yeah, that's fine. No, I'm just curious about it too. As you okay, and here you can see I was trying to start selling them again, but Bonnie, she instantly put up a wall saying I was trying to show her like evidence. I'm like, hey, look, look how many homes have sold with solar in your area, which by the way, this is I think the most powerful way to like pre overcome this objection. Go get your realtor, get a realtor on pull up on the MLS, just all the homes that have sold with solar in a specific zip code. And if you show someone that list in the cell, like they can't argue with that. It's like, hey, some people have heard in the past that solar can complicate homes, but just so you guys know that in the newer programs, don't look how many homes have sold near you with solar and boom, they can't say anything to that. Okay, but again, doesn't matter because I'm not in front of the their realtor. So the way I have brought realtors into the equation a few times and save things, but, um, and the other thing I tried is to try to place a little doubt in their heads that their realtor maybe doesn't know what he's doing. It's like, hey, is your realtor green certified? Okay, but they're defending their realtor. It's their friends, so they're they're defending it, and they've already made their decision. So I should have been like, hey, um, well that's cool. Hey, just for like future, um, your realtor does you have his number, right? If I call him, I just want to get his opinion on things and kind of hear his perspective. Because what's happened in the past is we've talked with realtors, and turns out they were thinking that we were doing solar on some of the older leases or older programs. So it sounds like your realtor's a smart guy, but. Um, I would love to just kind of get his feedback on things and then make sure he knows the difference between some of the newer programs because we've had much lower issues, much less issues selling homes with it. So yeah, do you have his number? And then would love to get his feedback on that. And then if I can call him and show him, convince him, then it's like, that's the only way I'm getting my foot back in this door. But I didn't do that. So still lost the deal. Okay, so we're going to go through a few more sections, but really this was the gist of it. As you can see, I'm not really getting anywhere, but she uh, gives me pushback when I'm showing her this spreadsheet of homes that have sold. And then I have to lay out, I have to put on the brakes, kind of slow things down because if they're feeling pressured. If they're feeling like I'm trying to sell them again, then it's not going anywhere. So instantly I put on the brakes. I go back to the cancellation stuff to try and reel them back in. And you'll hear we build some rapport, stuff like that. But that's kind of how this went. Okay, let's see. So I'll get your... We've had some situations where they didn't think they might move and then they go back, you know, like three years later and they're still in the house. <laughs> so. Well, we have those guarantees, obviously. Yeah. We still don't want to get lost. Okay, sorry for the bad audio here. Um, but yeah, you hear me, I'm trying to get to the bottom of if they're for sure selling or not. Because being in this business for a while, you know, people say they're going to move, then you go back five years later, they're still in the house. Okay, so most people don't know. And what was frustrating is these homeowners, they did tell me um, they might move in the future, but it was nothing like set in stone, just a thought they had. And now, conversation completely changed this time they're saying that they're considering moving within a year that um yeah it's just different than what we talked about so it's frustrating but it's how it goes sometimes i want to do i get a copy i want to make you want to waste your time that other yeah or other commitments or whatever 
No, you're good. Sorry, you guys had to go through it too. And I'm sure you guys wish you would have known before too for taking the time to look into it. But yeah, I mean, bottom line, like, I think you guys made up your mind and all that, but yeah, we could help you. We have a whole team to help in the whole transfer. So, and yes, like, there's so many homes with solar now, but it's a pretty common thing to, you know, sell it. Because with this, they do, like, a buyout option. So that's the thing, even if them, someone didn't want solar, then you guys have the option with this to increase the value. And then can just be, like, bought out and sell home. Well, that was the thought, like, yeah, you gave me other advice. You We've been working with him for a little while, so. Yeah, so it's like, it's like you know, maybe one month. Yeah, because we actually bought the whole Levi in the studio, had solar on it. Um, like, from our perspective, because they had to do that, they bought it out in the cell home. Now, we don't pay anything because it was included in like, the transaction of the cell home. So, for us, it wasn't complicated at all. Yeah. And that's speaking from my experience with right. it, but I get it. There's always a fear that maybe something could go wrong or makes it more complex. But. There's a possibility it'll go wrong. For us, it usually does. Um, yep so kind of just beating around the bush at this point not really getting anywhere but still getting back in there and um, at this point it's kind of like you have to preface it look hey i know you guys have made up your mind because if i don't say that then they're putting up walls again but if you preface it with the hey i know you guys made up your mind but just so you know then it's like it's kind of the push and pull it's buying you a little bit a little bit more time to slip them some more information see if anything changes but yeah no luck. Um, so yeah, I think that's the end. Yeah, my last kind of last ditch effort here. I'll play that and then we'll wrap up. But here's the last ditch effort. I sent him a copy of the cancellation forms we filled out. That was that. I was getting ready to leave. And here's my last ditch effort to see if we could change anything at all, but didn't work. So things like this do work, but you win some, you lose some. Some will, some won't. So what? That's the mindset you got to have. Would that change anything? We were able to make you guys feel more comfortable selling or i think we're most comfortable not having that obligation knowing that we have all the different things that are in the contract i think we're more comfortable knowing that we're not obligating to that for 25 years okay and i'll just make sure when if, if the house we get doesn't have it then we'll definitely be look in the market okay well you guys got my number right oh yeah yeah okay. your name in there okay so it's not just a number yeah Okay, hey, so that was it. My last ditch effort was just saying, hey, um, I know you've talked to your realtor. If we could show you, if I could have you talk to like 10 people that have sold without issues, would that change anything? Just if you talk to like several people who have gone through it personally. And of course they say no. So it's like, all right, I'm moving on. But the last things that you want to get out of this interaction, number one, you want to make sure that they have your number saved for in the future if anything changes and like if they do move hopefully i'm the first person they're reaching out to right and then number two i think i just paused it right before this but you want to go back and try to get some referrals like i'm getting referrals at every close that i sit in on so this person i did get a referral from and so that's the other thing i followed up with him on that referral make sure he still talked to his buddy that he referred so even though i lost this one there's still potentially good things that can come from it. I got a referral out of it. So I'm reminding him to talk to his buddy that he referred. And it's a few, it's a potential sell in the future if I follow up. And yeah, maybe they'll hit me up when they new move. So that's how it goes. Um, I hope that was valuable. And even though I didn't get this one, I have saved quite a few deals over the years by doing this process that you've heard in the last two episodes. Um, getting back in front of these people is key. Um, you're not going to necessarily go back to every person like I talked about in the previous podcast. Maybe it's people that have a major condition where their husband died or I don't know, something crazy. I've heard some crazy uh, conditions of people needing to cancel cancel their solar. So sometimes there's nothing you can do no matter what. Those people, yeah, you're not going to go back to because there's no chance in saving them all, then move on. But if there is a chance, then I recommend going back, showing up in person just like I did, especially if it's a decent commission, then always worth a shot. So I hope that helps. Again, don't forget to enter the giveaway. Um, we have until June 25th, so about a week, week and a half. So go enter the giveaway. And next episode, we have someone um, that is a master of simplifying the solar process. His name is Scott Hyde. He's coming on the podcast. He is CEO um, over at Coda Solar and UPC out here in California. But bigger than that, in my opinion, is he is the creator and I think CEO of Sunobi, which is definitely 
my top three favorite proposal softwares in solar. One of the best, and in my opinion, the most simplified solar proposal software. So you're going to hear from them why it is so important to simplify your sales process. And whether you use Sunnobi or not, you're going to hear some great tips from a very successful CEO of a solar company and someone that's crushing it in the solar software space. So don't miss out on that one. We've got some heat coming up on the podcast. You're going to want to keep tuning in every Tuesday and Friday. Thanks again for listening. I love you. Have an awesome week. Go close some deals. Peace. 